Hello. No, I'm here. You all right? Yeah, not too bad. How you doing? Yeah, yeah, not bad. Cheers, yeah. Good to finally chat to you. Yeah, yeah, it's, ta- it's taken a while. Like, yeah, life keeps getting in the way. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you're in a similar situation to me. You've just got a young, a young kid. Yeah, yeah, I've literally just been like... <laughs> Get, getting getting my daughter out of the bath then like yeah we got we got like a seven month old boy as well so it's all pretty oh, really? how about you <laughs> i've just got one boy he's, he's just uh he's, th- he's three and a couple of months so yeah he's, he's three in november so uh yeah it's, it's pretty yeah pretty up, and down, pretty up and down i guess yeah i mean you know it, it it's all good stuff but it's um it's fucking tired <laughs> right <laughs> you know like yeah, I mean, yeah. you've got two, so I can't really compare. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's just everything just seems to be like, is this is this chaotic or is it just like this is just like basic level <laughs> parenting <laughs> stuff, and I can't deal with it. So but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, we, we we made it, we made it, which is very cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice one. Are you are you still down south? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In uh, in Brighton still. So. Uh, okay, right. Yeah, like I, I, yeah, like I grew up here, and it's um, and it was quite cool, like you know, being in a band, you know, you toured around and got to see a bit of everywhere. And even when I was younger, like my dad was an actor, and he would go on on the road in shows and stuff, and you'd go and visit him. And I was always just kind of like, yeah, I don't want to live <laughs> anywhere else necessarily. <laughs> I know there's a few, pla- I could, I could probably like, you know, I like Bristol quite a lot, and I like Manchester, but you know, we're, we're here now. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's it. That's interesting. What, uh, what kind of stuff was your dad in? Uh, I don't know, all, all, all sorts of stuff, you know, like sometimes it would be like, you know, he'd be like doing a season in like a panto or something like that, <laughs> you know, something like right. that. He would always like be like playing the, the panto dame and stuff, which is always, <laughs> always, which is always pretty funny. Um, and like, you know, like he toured in some, this like, 70s disco themed musical called boogie nights that wasn't anything to do with the film about the porn industry that was like starring like shane ritchie and he did that for years so he like traveled all around like following this like fucking shane ritchie 70s disco musical <laughs> thing around um which yes. was, you know it was it was, it was something <laughs> yeah it's just funny you say that because my dad was a part-time actor as well oh but, right, uh, right 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 but yeah, I never like I never went to travel to see him. But um Yeah, I mean it was, yeah, it was like, a, just random stuff he was in, yeah. I mean, yeah, and like with actors, it's always like kind of like it's like feast and famine, right? Like, you know, like there's they're either like got loads of stuff going on or like nothing. So he was either on the road or he was a stay-at-home dad with us. So it's, <laughs> yeah. it's quite quite a weird, weird way of doing stuff. Just immediately makes me think of extras, the Ricky Gervais thing. I've not, I've not, I've not <laughs> seen it. I've not seen uh, it. Okay, it's uh, great. Yeah, it's quite funny insights, kind of like that. Yeah, that's yeah. how much the kind of world, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so <laughs> yeah, I've just been listening again to your stuff, and um, I have real memories of listening to of hearing Boy Toy. I don't. Was it on oh, any? Really? Yeah, I don't know why that song stuck out. Was it on any kind of compilation at some point? I, do you think? I don't think so, because I, you know, like. There's there's the song you know we had this there's the singles and there's the songs off the albums that kind of just seemed to sort of travel or like you know would maybe like get played out in like an indie club or something like that but I've never thought of that as 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 being one but like <laughs> yeah um, maybe oh, um, that's maybe my mate put it on like a, a compilation or a yeah, playlist yeah, or something yeah. but I remember uh, yeah I really remember that one for some reason but okay cool but yeah I suppose getting a bit chronological. Um, it's a good it's a good way to do things right? <laughs> <laughs> so you formed in Southampton is that right yeah yeah um none of us were like actually like from Southampton like but it was like um we kind of all met through the university there so me and Lise who's the other singer in the band and Tim who played plays bass um we were all on like the same media course and stuff and just kind of like gravitated to each other as being like the indie ones in the room (laughs) uh like when you're like 20 and it's all like that tribal it's like that person like looks like they go down down to an indie disco yeah yeah. well I mean I think actually like 
properly first actually met Lise in a queue to like the indie disco in town like I, I saw that she was in the in like the lecture hall or something like that it's like oh an indie person over there didn't actually speak to her and then actually met in the queue to like the same indie disco um but and, and um the, the the other guys and I live you know from Brighton but everybody else was kind of like Southampton adjacent so like least lived out in like this little town called like Holbury which is like in the middle of the New Forest and the other guys in the band live kind of like just outside like smaller towns outside Bournemouth so it's all like kind of like yeah really scattered around the um the south coast but we all kind of like collectively came together in Southampton and like the other two guys in the band uh Tom the other Tom in the band um also went to like the same uni as us and him and Tim went back quite a ways and um Lewis Tom's brother well they they knew each other from being brothers <laughs> um that, that all that all makes sense um and yeah so we all just kind of like me and Lisa and Tim kind of got got chatting and then we met Tom and we started talking about this whole thing of like trying to get a band together and Tom and Tim and Lewis were already playing in a band they had this other indie band called Games for May um which was kind of just you know quite sort of nice kind of like jangly in you know indie post Brit poppy kind of stuff um I guess and and me and Lisa were kind of like yeah we want to form a band and like these this the, like this we'll just poach <laughs> we'll just like poach these guys so um we kind of like yeah they were kind of cheating on their other band by by forming this band with with, with me and Lise because um <laughs> it took ages before the, the guy who was the singer in their other band found out that we were doing this they were doing this other project I, I, I think that like maybe like <laughs> we might have like actually just been about to been signed and was like guys you should probably tell him <laughs> that like <laughs> you know you've got other shit going on um, yeah yeah that was quite funny. Um, yeah, it's, it's funny that you mention like spotting people that they would look like they're into the indie type of stuff. Because I remember it's a bit of a random story, but I remember going to Southampton to watch football, and um, we stayed over. And my mates weren't really into the people. I was weren't really into it, but I remember we our scientists were playing that night. Oh right, yeah. And. Um, I just literally just stopped some kids in the street that looked like they would be going or that they'd been. <laughs> I was like, hey, you just been to that gig? They're like, yeah, yeah, nice one. <laughs> uh, yeah, cool. yeah, just been in that. So um, was there like a, quite a good scene down there? I remember like quite a lot of good bands would play there, would they? Um, it was kind of a place that, yeah, people would sometimes come through, but I always felt like Southampton was never like a must play on like the gig circuit. Okay, right. Um, but there, you know, there was like um like the joiners was like the the uh, the, yeah. the, the the local small indie venue that, that you would go and play. And we, you know, we we played there and stuff like that. But um it was quite maybe like just being someone I didn't grow up there or like grow up with like going to shows there I never really found that there was like a scene or if there was it was just something that we weren't, we weren't necessarily um privy to so you know like my kind of like uh, experience of like just when we were living in Southampton for a bit was just that it was um it felt like everybody was just like just really really loved the stone roses a whole lot and i i really didn't it, it, there was this, there was a certain kind of like um i i think i basically found the four people in the area that were into the kind of shit that i was into to be in a band with and that was it <laughs> <laughs> um and so we kind of actually never play we didn't play southampton for ages like we never did like a first local show in Southampton and we kind of actively avoided it because oh, okay. we, we just didn't really necessarily think that there was a scene or an audience there um for us at the time um and then it was quite weird when we actually did start playing there it was after we'd actually put some stuff out and we were always kind of 
scattershot publicized as being just generally from the south coast or from southampton or sometimes we were from brighton um so you know to some people we were kind of like a local band but we had no connection to the local scene but still like there was a point where we just started playing shows and the shows were always really good <laughs> that we played in southampton like the crowds were always really good and we got treated like kind of like a like a hometown band even though we didn't necessarily feel like we were um which was quite weird but it was you know it was it was nice it made me think like oh yeah this this town's not so bad <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah like the sound of the band like I guess if you didn't know where you're from you might associate with like like a lead sound maybe do you know what I mean would that be fair like where uh... or where did you get the influence to be you know it's obviously a bit different to like you said the other band um is it Tom was in yeah, yeah. The, the other guy, jangly, the, obviously had a bit of a different idea to that. Yeah, well, we never really kind of discussed like what we were go- exactly what we were going to do. We were like, well, we're going to do a band, and I guess I'll play this, and you'll play this, and we'll do that, and we'll get you know, I've got I've got some riffs. So yeah, you've got some riffs. Well, I think it was always going to be a bit noisier than what the other guys' band um, were doing, and Lise had been in a band as well, kind of like that had split up, kind of like just before we got help together that was a lot more kind of almost like electro clashy like it was like all like drum machines and synths and stuff like that so you know it's like she was bringing like a you know old school kind of like clunky sounding keyboard to the mix like yeah we'll we'll put that in and we never really took anything off the table so we never you know we were always kind of like well we'll just sound like whatever we sound like but I yeah I feel like actually like a lot more of our influences were like kind of probably coming from American bands like American like post-punk and like post-hardcore bands um and although like and then everyone had their own like different different things I know like Tom was like super into sort of um Echo uh no uh Echo Belly is that my thing okay I've heard the name yeah uh or no Maybe I've got it wrong. Um, just like, you know, like there's like, there was like Britpop was in there and like Lise was also into like lots of like Riot Girl and like Teen C bands like Biss and stuff like that. And then we were all like listening to Sonic Youth and um, yeah, like more like ex- kind of like more extreme American kind of like post hardcore stuff like the Blood Brothers who we ended up like going on tour with and, and things. So it was just kind of like a grab bag of like, anything that felt like loud and had some sort of air of being kind of confrontational and had lots of energy to it like it was just yeah and 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 it was at the time that all the you know the strokes and everything like that was kind of blowing up um and I you know I I think some of us if not all of us you know like I always had this kind of thing like yeah I mean these songs are you know nice but is this really the most exciting thing going on in guitar music at the moment <laughs> <laughs> you know like it's it was like these are nice jangly kind of like pop songs and I love a bit of indie jangle but I also wanted like to make something just raw and a bit more kind of confrontational like in a way like we're not like Larry people but for some reason when we started making music like we just kind of went out and <laughs> just trying to antagonize people at, <laughs> at, our, at our shows by like just playing this like really kind of fast and abrasive and having this very kind of like yeah whatever give a shit kind of attitude <laughs> which which I, I still don't really understand because it's not like how I am when I'm not playing music and I, I think it also stems from the thing of I was saying about we didn't really feel that there was a scene for us in Southampton. And I think we kind of went into a lot of early shows feeling that like people probably weren't going to like what we were putting out. So, you know, the best defense is a good offense. So we just went (laughs) out and we're just like, you know, I was like leaping off the stage and like playing guitar in the crowd. And it was all, you know, (laughs) more is more, (laughs) I (laughs) guess. So if you weren't playing Southampton to start with, where where were you playing um, most of your gigs? Um, we kind of the 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 way we kind of like started up, like you know, that I had not very much of a game plan 
but the you know it, it was basically right we we write a set we do a demo and then we just contact as many promoters as we can within a reasonable driving distance of Southampton so we were kind of from the jump kind of just trying to play everywhere so that you know that was kind of that you could do in a night so I think the first show we did was like Bournemouth and then we did Brighton and then we did London and then we were doing like Oxford and uh, Bath and Bristol and Exeter and that kind of spread um so yeah just just trying to get about and it was kind of it was quite weird like we we did did our first demo uh in 2003 and we did our first show in uh Bournemouth and I think like the day after that or like you know it's like just right before like almost like new year or something um like Christmas new year we'd like printed out all these, you know, we'd like CD burnt all of our demos and we'd printed some labels and put them in cases and we the jiffy bags and we'd like written letters to all these promoters and we'd been trying to like research online, you know, who was putting on anything that seemed remotely like we would fit, um, you know, in, in this kind of area. And we just like posted out a load of stuff. I'm like, well, I guess we'll just wait and see what happens. Um, and it was quite weird actually, like how, sort of like soon we started getting responses I think we must have like timed it really well that we posted all the demos out like right at the end of the year when no one's putting gigs on right like you know like the the the, the gigs kind of die off like halfway through December and then they don't really pick up until a week or two into January so I guess you had promoters who kind of had a bit of time on their hands um to listen through to demos and so from that you know we started getting shows here and there and and it kind of I think just picked up I think it was just kind of like a bit like word of mouth it's one of the things I was like just word of mouth like work and it's kind of like, oh yeah it kind of did like it, it's kind of how we ended up connecting with uh Fantastic Plastic who released our albums it's like we I think the, the chain was like we posted a demo to this club night called Purr in Bath that used to like do like um a, like a weekly indie like indie rock show followed by disco and they knew somebody um they were friends with somebody who worked at Fantastic Plastic at the time and they were like oh you should have a listen to this and so then they just sent us an email and asked for a, a demo and so then they ended up coming to like our first show in London like which was only like our third ever gig so it was all like really quite quickly we we're kind of like why is there a label coming to watch us play at our third gig um I think it's also through those guys they would send out like CDRs like compilation CDs they would make of all the bands they had playing to John Peel to like you know be like this is what's coming up at our club you know why don't you play something on the radio and so like then like yeah like John Peel played something within like the first few months of like us having something recorded it was just like this is this is quite weird <laughs> um, but it was yeah yeah quite surreal but yeah it was cool yeah I suppose if like 2003 it's kind of like a bit of a hotbed at that point wasn't it I guess in looking I, back there's a I mean yeah it was a lot of there's a lot of nights going on right there's yeah. a lot of um I, I'm, you know, I, I could, I have absolutely no idea what, like, <laughs> the music scene and, like, you know, club nights or things that, you know, we played a lot of clubs and we played a lot of just, like, you know, small DIY shows and there was just seemed like there was a lot going on and, yeah, it was cool. Um, I don't get to go to gigs anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean, that, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, like you say, it's pretty a fast turnaround in terms of getting an EP out. It, yeah, then, it was. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was kind of crazy. It 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 really was this thing of like we recorded the demo and we just posted the things out and then it just kind of kept on, kept on rolling. Uh, like we never like approached labels or, or anything like that. Like our goal was like, well, let's play some shows because that was the thing that we were interested in. We thought like, well, I don't know, like maybe some pipe dream thing we'll get like a seven inch or something like that will we'll, we'll come together um but you know who knows i don't know how to do that like you know we had no <laughs> idea so we we're just like well let's just play some gigs because that'll be fun 
Um, and one of the people that we posted uh, the demo to to get gigs um, uh, was a promoter called uh, under name like Vacuous Pop that was um, operating in Oxford. And like it was, yeah, like again, like probably like in January, he was like, oh, I've listened to this demo. Uh, I want you to play the show, but also, you know, we have to release this. Like, you know, the, the you know, you should just release the demo as as is um because it's too good and, and we were kind of like okay yeah cool <laughs> that's nice um which was yeah which was kind of crazy like and so it was kind of however many months into it we were kind of like okay well I guess we've achieved everything we've set out to do because we're gonna like you know someone wants to put out like like a record and um like I would just remember you know like one of the cool things is just like just waking up one morning to a delivery of like 500 records that got delivered to my house so like because we were like hand numbering them so they all had to be delivered to us and just being like what there's all this like all these like heavyweight vinyl seven inches that are coming um yeah it was and, all, it, that was and these are from real. recordings the demos you just did them like off yeah. your own back just 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 between you guys uh we we went to a studio we found a studio in Southampton and it was you know like so much of the how everything worked in that band I feel like is completely unreplicatable certainly now like I don't know how the fuck you know you go about being in a band now and and, and what your route is to try and get something to happen um especially if you're like trying to do it like off your own back um but like it was literally right we should record a demo where do we do that I don't know I'm gonna look in the yellow pages for like recording studios in Southampton and there was like one or something um and you know called the guy up and like you know I think we probably spent like 200 quid or something just like on a day to record three tracks um but we I think we just lucked out because you know I know other people in bands who've like gone to like local studios in Brighton to try and record demos or what have you and just being like, yeah, the guy, the guy who runs it just exclusively listens to ACDC and he tries <laughs> to make everything sound like ACDC or something like that. Um, but the the guy we ended up recording with, um, this guy called Justin, was like had like loads of the same like references as us and like really kind of got it. Um, and you know, like put in like really good work on just like this. Like the first demo and just the day and like so we ended up going and doing like a load more stuff with him it was just like the first guy we meet it works it gets us you know shows it gets us signed and like we ended up recording pretty much everything we did with him apart from the first album we did you know we did all of like our b-sides uh all the subsequent eps we did our second record with him because we just had a you know we kind of clicked and it was always kind of you know it was, it was easy to kind of like go in and 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 he would know kind of like what we were talking about and what we wanted and we trusted the more we worked with him you know we would trust his suggestions and things like that but you know like complete fluke <laughs> okay so you <laughs> went like... sorry go on no 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 I've, I've, <laughs> I've got i've got i've got nothing <laughs> so you went back to this the guy you worked with the demos you went back with the second album is that what you're saying yeah yeah we did so oh, that's cool right yeah like it was just um because we 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 did a few like bits like we would go in there and like did demo sessions for the out al- for the first album and we went and recorded the uh, we recorded the first album in london um with a producer called dan swift um and you know, we did that in about a week but then like you're you know as we were like trying to release singles off of the first album and we'd kind of run out of the b-sides that we'd also recorded during the album session we were like oh we need to go and record something else and so we're like oh we'll go back and do it with justin um and like it all just came out really well and so we were kind of, and when we were looking at doing the second album which was a much longer process like we had a bigger budget to do it um and we were just like well it's near where we all can st- live and stay like rather than us like relocate to london for a month and also and just be like also like hemorrhaging money on hotels or you know just eating out all the time to- you know like and and all this kind of stuff we were like well we can do it kind of close to home um with with someone that we are really comfortable with and the studio that we know really well and just kind of hunker down and, <laughs> and get it done so yeah 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 and like 
um, with the label Fantastic Plant. What fantastic, fantastic plastic. plastic records? Yeah, were they yeah, quite yeah. um were they quite relaxed in terms of letting you do what you want to do in terms of who you wanted to record with then? Uh yeah. I mean they suggested um Dan who did the first record. And then by the time he did the second record and we're like, we want to do it with Justin, like he'd already done like a, they'd they'd already heard like what he'd done on like some of the B sides and um another EP that we'd done with him like since the record so I think that he felt like a, pr- a proven commodity and stuff like that and I think he did like I'm trying to think other bands that were in Southampton I think he did a bit of work was it the delays or something oh uh, yeah they, they were like a Southampton band he was kind of like knew, knew them so he'd kind of like done a little bit of like work and stuff with them um okay I can't I can't remember any other bands like Southampton but you know it was the delays and Oh, like our first gig that we did was with this ba- um, band. It was like Jamie from the Claxons. It was like the, it was like his pre-moving to London, pre-Claxons band, <laughs> right. or something. I think they were called like Real Sweet Deal, or something. <laughs> and they were like this. I don't know if they even had any proper songs. Like it was, I think it was cl- kind of a jam band or something like that. But like that was it. That was it as far as I knew about bands from Southampton. But um, uh, yeah. I just remember, I think, yeah, there was a Southampton theme to when I talked to Jamie from the Claxons, mm. yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, so how, how many gigs did you actually done before you got this got this album deal then? Uh, I don't know. Like, it was it was kind of weird. Like, they, they came to our third ever show, the, the late, and... Um, and we just kept on talking to them over like a course of months and they would come to other shows and things like that. So they always kind of, they kind of seem kind of interested and, in, you know, which is nice of them because I thought our, the, the show they came and saw us at wasn't that great. Um, but I think they, they just kept on kind of like sniffing around to see if I, I guess we kind of, yeah, we'll see, <laughs> to, see, to see what we were about, like if we keep on going. Um I think it must have been by about like the summer. We recorded the album in the summer of two thousand four, um, so it must have been yeah, like over the course of like that six months that they were like kind of like saying, oh yeah, you know, like oh yeah, we'd be interested in doing something, and then they were like, oh well, maybe we'll do a mini album or something with you guys, and we were like, oh yeah, mini album, yeah, that's cool, that's cool, and then they were like, oh well, the studio's actually, you know, the studio's not available actually when we were planning on having you go and record for like another month or so so do you want to just like take the time and like write a few more songs and do an album and that was like quite weird like because I don't know what you know what you know the difference between someone saying mini album and album you know you're kind of like mini album yeah that's fine that's yeah <laughs> then, then they're like you want to do an album and I was like oh shit guys they want to they want to, they want to do an album we're gonna go you know it was yeah it was it was the whole thing was just kind of like um it was like well i'll believe it when we're actually in the studio recording it and then you're in the studio recording it's like well i'll actually believe it when it's like pressed on vinyl it's like well i'll <laughs> actually believe it when it's in the shops you know like there was there was a there was an air of kind of skepticism and and disbelief <laughs> and just like nah this isn't this isn't for real <laughs> Was it and was it like a two album deal or how did it work? No, it was always just kind of like a roll. You know, it wasn't like in terms of a deal. It was like literally like right, we'll we'll do an album, and then everything else was just kind of kept on kept on rolling. Like they'd be like, right, we'll do an album. They're like, oh well, we should do a single for the album. It's like okay, well that's first single. Yeah, we should do another one. Um, and then we kind of talked about doing the second album, but we did. Um, this EP called the committing social suicide EP, like in between is kind of like a, as a, as a stop gap. Um, uh, yeah. And it just kind of, yeah, just kept on building more and more kind of like momentum, like, yeah. And, and then eventually we're doing, we're doing a second album. Um, but there was never any kind of like, yeah, like big kind of, here's the deal. Here's how many records we're going to do. You know, there was no kind of like, advance or anything like that it was still pretty indie but like they they were like quite quite indie but I think they had a bit of backing from like a bigger label so they had a 
it was it was cool you know like it was a bit it was more than diy there was a bit of budget so for us to like get out on tour and stuff like that but you know not not any money for us we never, <laughs> never made any money out of making music and i not never will enough. but yeah <laughs> but that's that's all right so like they didn't have any like kind of goals you had to achieve in terms of um... getting to that next album it's always just like I you seen no, how it went? No, not. I mean, I may, maybe they did, but they didn't share that with us. You know, there was no like mandated, like, right, it's got to do this. Because I think it was all a bit like suck it and see, kind of. You know, like they, I think they thought that there was something there that was interesting. Um, and yeah, like, I, and, and and we did kind of like manage to do you know we didn't like take over the world in 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 any by any means but like you know like it felt like it was connecting with some people like there was an audience for it we were getting to do diff, you know all these like different tours and getting press and some of the press was really nice and some of the press fucking hated us <laughs> but like again you know that was the kind of band that we were aiming to be in a way you know like you know wanted to like definitely um make you feel some make people feel something and so it's either they, you're either going to like us or you're going to absolutely hate us and you know that was kind of, <laughs> that was kind of, it's kind of fine it was kind of fun to do that at least at least for one album <laughs> um yeah so yeah it was all just a bit of a yeah let's just see let's see what happens and it just felt like i guess it it it, it built up enough momentum on the first record um that it felt like doing a second one was a, was a good idea for them or something you know <laughs> yeah 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 and yeah you mentioned like the kind of press element what yeah. what like what role did like the likes of enemy play do you remember like getting uh, featured in there much yeah we did uh a little bit never like you know they never gave us a fucking radar piece thanks a lot <laughs> enemy uh but we got some like live reviews um in there which was cool and um um yeah and like the the like i don't think they ever gave us any terrible reviews on like the albums or the singles or anything like that so like you know it's pretty it was an all right you know write-ups and things like that but we were never I, I just don't think we ever quite neatly fit in with like you know what enemy bands were at that time I, I i think the band you know by its kind of nature and the influence we had and the influences we had and the, the music we were making we always felt like we were kind of like skirting on like the periphery of different scenes like um you know like we could play with we would play shows with like we played some shows with like the cribs and like you know we'd play with like the rakes or art brute and like that kind of the british indie scene that was going on then but then always kind of felt that maybe you know we were a bit too gnarly for like certain <laughs> certain portions of the crowd like you know definitely had a few beer cans thrown at me when we were like <laughs> supporting the cribs I think or something like that <laughs> like, right um but then we'd also play with bands like um um like like a, like a like more kind of like noisy like American bands like the Blood Brothers or like X Models and um you know and, and some and sometimes we get booked to play with like weird kind of like math rock post rock bands where like you know they're playing very serious music where all the songs are 10 minutes long and we'd be like that's like all of our songs are a minute and a half long and it's like <laughs> <laughs> so it, you know like and and you would and some of that crowd these different crowds would connect with what we were doing because there was something kind of familiar there but I don't think we were ever like fully like this one thing like it's like oh you're that kind of indie band or oh you're that kind of punk band or it was just <laughs> yeah so it was a bit scattershot so i think that's why it didn't really um you know it's always nice we got got in the enemy we got in like plan b magazine and rock sound and all that kind of those bits and bobs but i don't know if we ever like felt like we truly belonged to any of them right okay if that makes sense and did you have good like good relationships with other bands like did you did you fit in in that way kind of thing um 
Hmm. Yeah, we got on. Yeah, we got on well with like other bands. Um, and it was yeah, I think that thing like we we didn't really come up like in a scene, but then we would like tour around and we would like you know you kind of like make friends with like different bands on the road that you kind of like find like oh kind of like kindred spirits and stuff like that, which is um, which is nice. I'm trying to think like who who we would have played like there was like bands like um, there's this Norwich indie band called Bear Suit who we ended up playing with lots of shows with they were like kind of like a favorite for like John Peel and stuff but they were also doing this kind of weird like slightly twee slightly aggressive lots of keyboards and boy girl vocals and things like that so like you know we'd like connect with them and um I was like who else is there like the retro spankies good good good, good is a good band name um and um you know other people like lost um like gareth from los campesinos like always like like kind of like came out to like some of our shows and lise was like mates with um eddie from art brute from like back in the day i think back when he lived around like sort of southampton or bournemouth or whatever and things like that like you know so like and I was kind of like quite liked that thing of like just being on the road and then being like, where are we playing? It's like, oh, we're playing with this, with those guys again. You know, like that thing of like, you just like keep on crossing paths with people on the road and getting to know them more and, and become friends. So yeah, that's, that was always nice. So like, yeah, we never like had a scene that we were kind of like a, a, a part of, but like kind of scattered around. <laughs> they, were, they were like the kindred spirits, I think. So yeah. And in terms of like sorting gigs, is that something that go through the label or how did that work? Um, I kind of, yeah, looked after. <laughs> I was kind of like, kind of trying to like manage everything to begin with. So I was kind of like talking to the label and I was the one kind of like dealing with a lot of like booking gigs, um, at least initially. And, and sometimes things would kind of like would come up and people would contact the label and be like, we want them to go and do this or what have you. So it would come about in different places. And as we got onto like doing the second album, I think the thing that like made things quite difficult for, for the band um, was like the first album was very kind of like DIY and we could kind of do, you know, like we, we would kind of like organize things ourselves or like things would come up. Um, you know through the label um but it was all very kind of like ad hoc and making it up as you go along and then as it came to do a second album I think you know the label wanted like there to be a bit more machinery I guess behind the band in terms of like a book a booking agent and a manager and we never really found the right people I think to to do those things like so you know we had a couple of booking agents and like the fir- the first one we had was like the guy who booked baby shambles and css so like he just didn't give a shit that we were on it you know he, he kind of said that he would do it i don't know if he even saw us play i'm not sure if he like missed the show that he was coming to and then he felt awkward about it so he said that he would book us out of like kind of like to make up for it but then his like assistant was just booking it and it was like right you're doing a tour of club enemy shows and if anyone's ever like gone out and on a tour of club enemy shows they they weren't good like they were always, it was always sounded like a better idea on paper than it actually was. Um, in what way? Because we, I remember our band. We only had a small band, but we we played the one in Hull. But I remember like the main band. Yeah, I don't know really. I, I, I guess they didn't have a great time. I think we played a couple of, uh, maybe one club enemy show that was actually quite good, and I I think it was just like because it had the name enemy slap club enemy slapped on it the the thinking was it's a ready-made crowd of like people who will like indie music but like mm. sometimes you would just you know people don't show up to see the bands that's always that thing of like indie bands in clubs that like you know sometimes people show up early and they want to see the band other times they're just like well when does the when does the indie disco start why is there a band here and you're playing till you know like 10 people who are quite disinterested and we we played this one show <laughs> like i think it was like it wasn't Newcastle. It was somewhere kind of like round that way, like somewhere on Tees. I can't remember exactly where it was, where, you know, there was like a there was a club room downstairs and there was the band room upstairs and we were playing our set and there was maybe like 20 people or something in the room. 
and we would finish our first song and it was just absolute silence. <laughs> and then we were like, we just awkward, nervously laughing on stage, like what, what's going on? Like, and then we play the next song, absolute silence. But like during all of this, no one boos, nobody heckles, nobody walks out. Like, you know, there's another room downstairs, you know, where they could be like drinking or whatever. Like everyone just stands there in silence <laughs> for the whole show. And it's just like, I've never understood what was going on in that gig. It was just so weird. <laughs> and, and I think things like that maybe soured me. You know, like I think when you've like, you know, traveled up the country to go and play to 20 people who don't even make any sound, a reaction would be something, you know, like somebody was like, you shit, mate. That would be, you know, <laughs> that would be something. I can work with that. <laughs> like, you know, like just the silence was so weird. Um, so um what was, what was i talking about oh yeah book, so we had yeah, a, a, a booking agent who like in theory is like well this guy's gonna have loads of connections but actually is not actually interested that we're on his roster and then we had like somebody else and then who was like just kind of starting out doing their own thing and i think we were like essentially like their biggest band so it was great you know like we got more attention but it was the flip side that they were just starting out so they didn't necessarily have like the connections to get us like on shows that we weren't kind of getting already you know like um mm. um but you know i think we were lucky on with a bunch of stuff like we did um this one show um in bristol that we got asked to play uh with the blood brothers who were like our one of our heroes when we were starting out and then we were like chatting to them after the show. That was very nice. He gave them the record. And then when they came on tour next, like they asked us to come and do the next tour, like do the whole tour as a support. And they did it the next time they came around, which was really cool. And a sim similar thing happened where we played a show in uh, Brussels with Testicles, And we were just like hanging out with them at this show. And then they went on tour and asked us to go out and like support them on like this whole UK tour. So like stuff like that was really nice. And like being asked to go and we did like, yeah, like did a few shows with the cribs and like, it was quite nice. You know, like we kind of like, oh, this band's pretty big. Like why on earth are we playing with, playing with the cribs or whatever. And, was, and then actually been like, Oh, you've actually heard the record. <laughs> like, you know, like stuff like that. That was so, yeah, like stuff like that was always, you know, it, it's, it's always nice to be asked. Right? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, playing around Europe and stuff, that must have been pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I think it was, like, must have been, like, 2005, I think, was, like, the the kind of, like, the the boom year for, like, because our, our album came out at the end of 2004, and then, and, and we had, like, a tour booked for, like, the, you know, January 2005, so that was, like, our first UK tour. It was just, like, us in a van, kind of, like, figuring it out as we went along. Um, and then we got asked to go on tour with the Blood Brothers. We got asked to go and do a tour in France. Somebody asked us to go and do a tour in Germany. We went and did like some festivals in uh, in Belgium. Um, then we did like another like our own like UK tour at like the end of the year, which was really you know like cool, just doing our own thing again. Um, and like we kind of like rounded out the year. I think we did like two shows with the Cribs and. The test icicles asked us to go on tour with them like for the you know like the following year so it was just kind of like that that first that was like yeah the first year since the first album had been out just felt like whoa just like this is really cool like and it just felt like we were getting momentum going um and i think that's kind of like was like the thing where things kind of went started to kind of like slow down and peter out for the band is that like we kind of like a bunch of things happened where we lost momentum um and it just yeah like so it's like we went and recorded the second album in 2000 in like january uh, no february 2006 um but it didn't come out the album didn't come out until i don't know march or something like that of 2007 so it was like a whole year of the album, like being sat on the shelf. Um, right. So why did that happen? Uh, yeah, a bunch of things. Like, so there was this whole thing, like, you know, the label will kind of like, well, we want to do a second album, but, you know, we want to 
give it a bigger push and we want you guys to have like more of a machine behind you so it was part of it was like okay we think we found a manager oh no the manager's a complete fucking psychopath so we don't have a manager anymore we've got to try and find a different manager and like oh we've got a booking agent oh no we don't have a booking agent <laughs> the booking agent doesn't actually really want to book any shows for us so there were all these false starts with like trying to get that kind of infrastructure behind the band um and then you know like well this is happening i think it was just getting i don't know things just became like slightly tense and basically like tom like decided that he was wanted to leave the band like i don't know like mid 2006 but like you know the album was already done and so then we were kind of like oh like that kind of like shook us all a bit because we were like well, what are we going to do um so we just had to take a beat and kind of like figure out what we do like you know do we carry on going do we get somebody else in and we carry on going as like a four piece and just kind of like reworked stuff but you know like the label was like well we're not gonna you know press a record if there's no band so that took a while to kind of like get get back and up and running and then you know like the lead time for doing a record is like three months or something like you know like you know that you know three months for like doing all like the press and the pressings and all this kind of stuff so yeah like suddenly like a year over a year have gone by and like we hadn't had like you know the album hadn't come out um and it came out and you know like it was still I think like got good press and all that stuff was gone but like I, I don't know if it was like us or like in our heads or like you know just felt like we'd kind of gotten slightly out of rhythm and lost a bit of momentum and so yeah it wasn't like it 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 everything kind of like felt a bit harder and like a bit more of a challenge um whereas we'd had like that sort of two years of things kind of like gradually building and all this like kind of like oh we're gonna do this we're gonna do this and then it suddenly became a bit like well I fucking hope we can do something <laughs> I hope we can do this. I hope a tour comes up. And um, cause, yeah, it did feel like there was more pressure and it, did, uh, you know, for, for it to work because it was just, yeah, a slightly bigger production. Mm. Um, so, you know, yeah, it's kind of a bummer, but that's, that's, that's what it is. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And where, where did you fit in into all this of mm. interest? Did that get sacked off at some point? No, we managed to finish it. I okay. think that, I think that we managed to finish uni like, but I, I think we were recording the first album like on the summer break from uni or something like that. And then like the album's done, we went back and did the final year. So, you know, we were like going off on tour and yeah. So it was just, just kind of like the end of it, but it was totally like the whole thing of like, mm, I didn't end up pursuing kind of like anything remotely close to what I, I did at university for like years and years and years and years after, because I was like, I'm just about yeah i'm in a band like we're gonna do this <laughs> this this is what we're doing now yeah and then when that finally comes out the second album yeah. um yeah you like you say is it a bit bit of a different vibe in the band at that point like what have you got bigger goals at that point like what were you hoping uh, for kind of thing i think yeah like the i think the expectation for everybody like you know with like I think with the label and like, you know, the push to like get all these things in place and, you know, like the record costs more, more money to make and all this kind of stuff, like not like still it wasn't like a huge label, but it was a big deal for them and a big deal for us. And also, you know, it's getting to that point where we're kind of like, well, I hope we can make this work. Right. You know, can we make this into something that we can make money out of? Can this be a career? Can this sustain us? Um, and but it it just felt like still like very kind of like that thing of when you're in a, a very new young band of having that scattershot thing of gigs of just being like well this gig will be great and this one will be like no one will come and it still felt like you know kind of like didn't yeah like you always like rolled into a town like not knowing what <laughs> what was gonna happen like you know like who's gonna how, who's gonna be at the show if anyone was gonna be into it so I, I think we were all kind of like putting ourselves under a bit more pressure or anticipation for I don't know something to happen with the second record that hadn't happened with the first um like I still really you know like I I really like both of those records like it took me quite a long time to kind of like 
come back and listen to them and make my peace with them. I guess there's this thing of like, um, like no uh, bands don't break up because everyone's having loads of fun and it's all going really well, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so there was this element of kind of like, oh, you know, we were like aiming for something bigger with the second record and actually end up being like kind of like the opposite. We just burnt ourselves out um and and then I, I you know kind of like sour I, I you know I, I felt like there's this kind of like a slight shame about like what had happened in the in the back you know like it was like this thing I pursued that hadn't worked out so it was like kind of like something that I was I felt slightly embarrassed by and I was like kind of like yeah I spent all these years like barking up the wrong tree um and and that all goes along with like oh I shouldn't have made this decision and oh I wish we hadn't had this kind of like awkward interactions with these people and all this kind of stuff and you just second guess everything um but now like enough time of it has passed to like actually just like look at like the thing as a whole and be like well that was a really cool experience and like I can't actually believe like all these things fell into place for this all to happen um you know like whether or not you know we never made any money and like never took over the world i i wouldn't change you know I, I, I'm, I'm glad that i did it you know it's like would i do things differently if i could absolutely but like <laughs> but i wouldn't i wouldn't you know erase it from history <laughs> um and you know it actually come around to being like be like oh actually we like you know i i, I I'm kind of like proud of what what we made but I think I think for a while I didn't even want to kind of entertain it you know yeah it's interesting like I remember talking to Dan Wilson from Black Wire and like this thing about it being part of your identity and when it all when you yeah. do like split up with a band or it doesn't work out I guess yeah yeah, yeah. you got you, you got you got that left to deal with kind of thing yeah it, it is weird because yeah like especially like you know like when it, it, yeah it does when you're like out on the road and you know this is the thing you want to make make your life it is kind of like well I don't know what do I what do I do with this now um and yeah like you know just like moving away from that thing of like being a guy in a band <laughs> and being something else and being like I don't know what something else I'm supposed to do like I thought this was the thing I was good at it turned out <laughs> Yeah, but it didn't pan out. So, yeah, it's quite a weird situation. It took me quite, quite a long time trying to figure that one out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, but just reading, like, the statement you put out, it's quite pragmatic when you split up, like, just in terms of, you know, you appreciated, like, that you'd had an amazing time, like, and playing great shows and stuff. Um, was it kind of a, a mutual thing within the band that you all felt like, like maybe the momentum had kind of stopped? Yeah, there was no kind of like, you know, no one like <laughs> shouting like, fuck you, and like storming <laughs> out of a room. Like, we all just kind of like, you know, we kind of like had a band meeting and like, you know, at some pub. And and I think, you know, like we were all, no, no one was there being like, no, we should carry on going. I think we all kind of like had felt like it it it, it wasn't kind of like, we had other things that we needed to kind of do. I think it was like, you know, like we, we started the band when we were just, just kind of finishing uni and then we were getting to the point like, actually there's other things that we need to kind of try and do in our lives now, right? <laughs> so, um, and yeah, it's just, I think just like a bunch of just, it's just like some of it just felt like silly shit, but it just felt there were a lot more battles around things on the second records that just kind of like hampered the whole thing yeah we lost the momentum and 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 we were a band that would write a lot like you know whenever we got together like we would just be like trying to churn out songs um and then we were like well we haven't actually we've written two songs in like a year and it, it didn't feel like we had like the fire to kind of do that so it felt like a a sign that maybe maybe we should put a pin in it yeah I am um, I guess I didn't ask you that either like about in, so in terms of songwriting like how how would the songs come about usually um you know what I, I have no idea how we wrote those songs like <laughs> it was like really 
like because we've been relearning to play the songs at the moment um because now, now we're playing together again um and it's that thing of like being like oh yeah i wrote that riff and like oh yeah you like wrote that riff and you wrote that bit and then like i don't know who the fuck came up with that bit all like within one song like it wasn't a case of like somebody shows up with like a whole fully fledged thing it really was like very collaborative and like throwing pieces together and see what worked and it's like not a way that like i have i think written in any other bands since but it was yeah it was um yeah really cool just like just bouncing stuff around the room um yeah mm. and we'd yeah, kind of cool. like and, you know and doing stuff like oh let's like you know we'll swap instruments and stuff like that to kind of see you know see <laughs> right. what that see what yeah and like stuff like that yeah cool and then yeah my reading you went on to do like solo stuff is that right uh i did yeah like so kind of like around the time when like I think like Tom had quit the band and we were trying to figure out what we were doing and we kind of had a break for a few months because I think like Tim was like maybe like I'm going to go and like work in Europe for like a month or so to kind of like get some try and make some money just have it have him have him a back pocket and I I just kind of like was like oh, I need to do I need to make something I didn't like the idea of like just sitting around not making anything so I kind of like invested in like just like a little bit of like you know like home recording stuff for a laptop and just like started making songs and I ended up writing like stacks and stacks and stacks of them and it was just I think at the time because everything was quite um yeah just a bit tense with like the band and like the label and not really knowing what we were doing I was like well this is something I can control because I'm doing it myself um so I did that for a bit um and yeah done done some that was like a project called lonely ghosts and then like i did some did some other bands like um like a two piece band called soft arrows and then like a sort of like a garage rock kind of like thing called nature channel which is like the last thing i did and everyone else in the band's like done other things like tom and lewis uh were in a band called great tin and i think lewis played in a bunch of other bands and Lace was um in a, like a Brighton kind of like indie punk band called Dust Kinsey Four. So everyone kind of like kept on like turning out stuff, you know, um, which is cool. Yeah, yeah. And we, it says you um formed in the live band for a band called Nullifier. Was that like? Oh yeah, it was. It was like this like Brighton indie. It was like our own kind of like mini like <laughs> Brighton super group. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. so, well, no, well, just of like. It, like a not so super group because no one knew who any of the bands were but it's just like basically all my mates that were in bands um that like um i've got like two friends um jim who um plays in who's now playing in help playing drums with us and he would like come out on the road with us and, and tour like he wrote some songs with another friend of ours um called todd who used to play in this band called my device who ended up doing like some bits and pieces like they were in the enemy for like a couple of weeks or something they they wrote they wrote and so these two guys wrote some um these like electro -y kind of pop songs and then they were like right we're going to do a band a live band for it but we're going to be like an eight piece band so we had like two drummers and two bass players and two keyboard players and me playing guitar and it was just like this like that was quite freeing i think after actually doing help just like showing up to somebody else's gig and just you know then being like yeah play this and just like you know we'll play a gig and you just play this part and go nuts and i'll be like yep yeah, i can do that that's that's fine <laughs> um yeah so yeah been kind of doing bits and bobs since yeah sure. um and then we'll move on to some questions that people have asked um just linking into oh, yeah. like linking into like you say, you're playing again, and Josh Dixon on Twitter was asking what's been the motivation for getting back together, and he says he's very excited for the Lexington show. Oh, cool. Well, uh, yeah, I'm very excited for the Lexington show. Um, it was... Um, I mean, I... Personally, I'd always wanted to do a final show. Like, when we split up, we just kind of split up, and that was it. We did talk about the idea of doing a farewell gig, but it just never happened um so that always kind of felt a bit like unfinished business and then over the years I kept on you know been like or like I maybe would talk to like some 
I think I had a conversation with Tim at one point about being like, oh, you know, we could do another gig, but I don't know. It never, I don't think ever, ever any, it never quite felt like the right time to do it or like everybody was in a place where they wanted to do it or, you know, I kind of like liked the idea of doing it, but like, I think just as something to do, I don't think I was fully like um, on board with it, but like, so it, it, it came to a point where it was like, I don't think it's ever going to happen. I don't think we'll ever do another show um and then basically it's like nearly two years ago um that lewis passed away um like and uh, kind of and i yeah like hadn't seen him for years and years um like in in person or anything like that but you know like found out that he'd passed away and just like really kind of yeah it's kind of e even somebody that like you know like haven't, haven't seen for ages it was like a real kind of like just like pulled the rug out from under me like you know and I'm because it's just like somebody that we had like shared so so much in this like this weird experience of like being in this band um but you know Louis passing was kind of got everybody in the band talking because it was like Tom him, Tom is his brother and it was kind of so reaching out to him and just, you know, seeing if he was okay. And 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 it, from that, everybody, it kind of brought everybody together. Um, to the, you know, we got together um, just to like hang out for like the first time in like, I don't know, like 15 years or something or whatever it was, like a, like a, over a year ago. Um, and and that was really not you know it was just like it was a really nice just like reunion of us just like hanging out and just like remembering all the kind of like dumb shit that we'd done and all the weird people that we'd kind of had run-ins with and um that yeah it it it, it and it, that also kind of got me reassessing the things that we had done in the band like because I was like oh shit like I know that somewhere in my attic I've got a load of old polaroids from like the first tour we did or something like that or like all like a box of like magazine clippings and things like that so i was finding that stuff and like photographing it and sending it to tom so that he had you know all this stuff of like the things that he'd you know done with his brother like back when we were in the band um and then we just kind of like yeah i think one day we were like you know should we do a, should we do a gig <laughs> like you know like it's nice that we're all you know we've kind of like revisited like what we were doing in the band and you know feeling kind of like quite positive about it and we're all in a kind of a good place together and it felt like something that we could do as a tribute to Lou and like the stuff that we had done collectively um so yeah, we're doing these. We do. We're doing these shows. Um, we've got our buddy Jim, who's playing drums for us, and which is also like a nice thing because he he used to like come out and like drive for us and do merch. So he was like very much like a part of like the extended band family. Um, so yeah, we're doing some shows, and we're just gonna donate all the money from the shows to like the hospice that looked after Lou, and yeah. So and. So yeah, it's kind of like it's it's bittersweet. I wish we were doing it with Louis and that you know we'd done it sooner, but we were kind of like, well, let's just kind of <laughs> let's do it while the the four of us are still here to kind of do it and 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 go out with a bang. And um yeah, it's kind of been a bit it was it was kind of a bit crazy because we were like, well, let's do this, but we don't know if anyone's actually gonna give a shit. <laughs> so um, but thankfully, like, you know, the response has been, you know, like really genuinely quite like heartwarming. <laughs> like, um, that like the first we were doing two shows at the Lexington, the first one sold out like quite quickly. So we were like, oh, we'll do another one and we just announced we do, you know we're going to do a show a warm up in brighton as well and the tickets have all gone for that and like just people just sharing that you know that the band meant something to them and i think that's just like kind of it's kind of more than more than i could have hoped for like there's nearly it's like 20 years now since like we formed the band and that's plenty of fucking time for someone to forget about you and, and 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 not give a shit anymore. So the fact that like there's even some people who are who are jazzed for it is really exciting. You know, like 
bit like people like traveling from you know i'm i'm excited if someone travels just from down the road to go to the show but i like i know like somebody's like flying over from the states and stuff to go Whoa. and see it and i'm just like what the fuck like, <laughs> you know like stuff like that is kind of blows my mind that like you know like after all this time that it kind of had some sort of still has some sort of life to it well oh, it's amazing isn't it yeah kind of makes yeah. everything worthwhile kind of thing it I, yeah like i i mean i hope that yeah, I'm re- uh, yeah, I'm really excited and for the show, and I I, I hope it, 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 that the shows can be what we in the band all want it to be, and what the audience all want it to be. You know, like, um, <laughs> but it, yeah, it, it, it's quite exciting to to do it. Yeah, yes. and like, yeah, re- revisit it and be like, okay, it's fucking tiring when you're doing it when you're forty. <laughs> <laughs> those, those, those songs were not meant to be played yeah yeah that's good <laughs> uh, Lex on Twitter says what were some of the inspirations for your songs can be about noise or lyrics I don't uh, know it's all well cooler yeah I guess we've not touched on <laughs> ly- lyrics like uh, um, what was the idea behind them and who came up with them kind of thing uh, me and Lise were just kind of you know I think it, generally it's like whoever's singing it came up with it and like the, the the first album is very much us being just like bratty indie kids just being like like our whole like I was saying like our whole vibe was like fairly antagonistic so we were just like we were like well we didn't think anyone was gonna like our band so our whole vibe is just showing up and being like yeah we're the best fucking band in the world fuck you <laughs> so <laughs> like there is this level of like and you know like um yeah, kitsch indie suburban angst antag- antagonism going in uh, on on the first record, and then I think probably like the second record gets slightly darker and more introspective and and and, and stuff like that. But you know, just you know, all, all all the good shit like being sad and angry and pissed off, like <laughs> um, yeah, 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 and then just like yeah like and and musically it was it really was just like throwing everything at the wall and seeing what stuck you know like it was you know it's really cool like really cool bunch of people to play with because like you know everyone was bringing yeah it re- like it really is like a collection of like just everyone's idea and their kind of particular styles rather than it being like you know like one person Mm. driving the ship and 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 being like in control creatively which is yeah which is cool yeah yeah um caleb may on twitter says just says can she swim now i guess we've not really touched on yeah yeah <laughs> where the name come from where the name came from as well yeah. the name um you know i i wish there was an interesting band name so it was literally we just wrote a long list of really stupid band names um I think the one that we nearly came, we nearly settled on was called Welcome Great Pumpkin, which is like, <laughs> which is like, you know, like a reference to like um like a Charlie Brown cartoon or something. So I don't know why we picked that. It was one of those things with yeah, picking band names is hard. We were just like, man, we got to pick something. Um, can she can she swim? I'll never tell. <laughs> <laughs> and then LC Era. Uh, so what is your favorite song to play live? Love from Tassie. Oh, favorite song to play live. Um, yeah, that's a good one because, like, now we're like playing these again. Like, there, there's a certain ones that just like kind of like, oh, yeah, that's that's a lot of fun. Um, actually, like what you was, um, Boy Toy, the song you mentioned earlier, as I, I think it's a song that kind of like crept up on me that like it just like it just by the end of it it's just like fucking banging um <laughs> which is which is quite fun and like i'm not singing on that one so i can just like you know throw a guitar around my head um yeah they're all yeah they're, they're, they're all a lot of fun i think like yeah that one there's like a b-side called la ain't a great place to be which is just basically us just trying to be as grisly as we possibly can which which is always quite fun so um yeah, like putting the set list together for this, these shows has been kind of something. Like, uh, it's definitely going to be the longest set we've ever played for. <laughs> like, because like our like our songs are like so short. It's kind of like we could do about twenty songs or something like that. You know? <laughs> yeah, I was just like 
I was really enjoying listening to the, the music today, like some some great songs. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank I was enjoying. You. I appreciate that. You're the one, is it? I was enjoying that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Instagram. Yeah, Sean Michael Conley says, "Did they know I have a club night in Shoreditch called Sensitive Youth, named after their song?" No, I around... didn't know that. That's awesome. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if it's still. It sounds like it's still going, but I don't know. Um, yeah, and then just some of those questions I sent you really just like was there a high point do you think has it been a high point um lot I think it's all lots of little things you know like I was saying like you know like I think like that one year like looking back on it like 2005 I was like oh shit that was really cool and like just stuff like getting a seven inch your first seven inch in the post like wow we've got we've got a record and getting like you know our first album on like this like turquoise vinyl and just being like holy shit like you know they fell for it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we made we made we made an album like all that kind of stuff and um it, it's always really great and you know I think it's all the stuff I've already kind of said like you know just like those moments of like just people like asking you like you know like other bands and people like that being like yeah we come out on the road with us and stuff like that and and, and getting props and acceptance from your peers and the people that you admire um is always really nice so yeah, it is. And then, yeah, we've kind of touched on it already, but is there anything you would do differently? Uh, yeah, loads. Um, I think just because this was like the first band that, you know, like any of us like really like took out on the road and really did anything. And nobody teaches you how to be in a band and how the industry works. And we didn't have like we didn't come from a scene or like have friends in other bands that were doing the same kind of stuff that we were doing. So we were kind of out there feeling around in the dark figuring it out on our own and you know the the label would give us guidance on certain things but um yeah not (laughs) yeah a lot of stuff I just like yeah yeah just like lots of little things I just you know wish I kind of like knew about like you know just like organizing tours and you know just like asking for rider and all that kind of stuff and yeah 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 um yeah I did put the one in about a funny story if you had one but uh, we, can, we can we don't have to do that i don't know uh i don't know if it's a funny story but i was i, I asked the rest of the guys fans like what's a funny band story <laughs> and like jim came back and was like what was like when he was driving for us until he's like oh there was that time i destroyed the van roof that when in like the middle of winter that wasn't funny at the time <laughs> but it was like first day of tour and he went under something that was too low and like like ripped a huge gash in the roof of this van that we'd rented and it was oh, just no. like so in the middle of winter it would rain and so like the van would leak and then we had to spend so much money at the end of it so you know not funny ha ha but like <laughs> <laughs> when yeah. you look back on there yeah well so you yeah. had to do like a whole tour with this dodgy roof yeah we bought like sort of like expanding foam and we're like climbing on the van roof and trying to like fill in the massive kind of like gashes in the van Uh, hell yeah (laughs) Uh, yeah i I said it's a funny story yeah Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, how are you doing all this time then is it is it just three gigs isn't it yeah we're just in two two london shows and the brighton show so it's kind of all we can kind of really muster you know like everyone's now you know, someone's got families and different things going on and we all live in different places. So this kind yeah. of felt like the best thing that we could, you know, get together and do. Yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah. Might try and get to one of the London ones, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Let, let, let me know. All right. Yeah, nice one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Cheers, mate. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. No, thanks for having us. I'll try. I'll, I'll put it out. Yeah, I'll put it out beginning of April. And if you, the gigs are at the end of April. Yeah, the Brighton one's on the uh, is on the first, and it's yeah, yeah, it's like the twentieth and the twenty first. So yeah. Okay, I'll put it up yeah, next be, month. And oh man, that'd be sick. Thanks, yeah. yeah, thanks for making the time to do it. That was really cool. No, that's it, mate. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, hopefully, see you in April. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give us a shout. Nice one. All right, dude. Cheers, mate. Take see care. You. Bye.